In the universe of Other Side, there are two worlds separated by a veil. The side we are familiar with, our side inhabited by humans, by souls, is known as reality. The opposite side is known as unreality, which is inhabited by beings called Others. The sides were named in literature written either by the Nostra Order or in the Guide's Journal, excerpts of which can be read during the game's loading screens, along with messages spoken directly to the player by suffering, which I'll elaborate on later. Now it's important, for the sake of the world, that these two sides remain distinct, separated by the veil. A tear in the veil represents a tear in reality, allowing nightmarish creatures that shouldn't exist into our world. This is because the inhabitants of unreality, the others, are essentially all the personification of concepts, including emotions or the results of them. Those born out of mankind's worst traumas being the most dangerous. An entity like Happy may exist in unreality or a more dangerous other, pain. The reason the Nostra Order exists, and the reason anyone is even aware of unreality and the veil, are because of humans who find themselves linked with an other from unreality that chose to inhabit their body and feed on them. Because of this, these people are labeled chosen ones, easily identifiable by distinct features they all share, discolored hair, white as ashes. Chosen ones are gifted with immortality so long as they link themselves with their others, bonding and sharing their mind. This is due to the others being immortal themselves, essentially just concept giving form. According to an actual other, sharing information on their own kind, or perhaps more appropriately, their own brothers. In an excerpt taken from the guide's journal, quote, the others feed on the human psyche, mostly through dreams and nightmares, unquote. Which is perhaps what motivates them to inhabit chosen ones in the first place, something the guide speaks on through personal experience, witnessing the starving others in their dreams. Unfortunately, this relationship tended to result in disaster, as Chosen Ones were gifted with astonishing destructive power because of their connections with their others, whom the laws of reality did not affect, according to the Book of Nostra. It is through Chosen Ones that nightmare creatures can slip through the veil and into reality. While these nightmare creatures, or even the Chosen One themselves, strengthened by others were dangerous enough on a small scale, if an other were to ever break through the veil and destroy it, it would bring about the destruction of reality as well. And so the Nostra Order existed to hunt down all Chosen Ones indiscriminately, along with nightmare creatures spawn of them, and kill them all before they could bring about such inevitable destruction. But while Chosen Ones could be dangerous, described as time bombs due to the presumed inevitable release of their other's power, simply having an other didn't mean you or even the other was evil or destined to cause harm. This is the case with the main character of the story, Lily, also known as the Mother, and her other, Memory who the player takes the role of throughout the game, having switched realities with her. As a child, Lily was easily identifiable as a chosen one due to her features, causing panic among her village and trouble for her family. Upon confessing to her mother that she heard a voice in her head and receiving a seemingly negative reaction to the news, Lily did her best to avoid associating with her other from then on. One day, a stranger, who may have been the other known as Curiosity, offered to take Lily away, but was refused by her father insulted at the mere suggestion. Not long afterwards, her village was burned to the ground, likely by the Nostra Order during a crusade for her, and Lily fled as far and fast as she could, obeying her mother's final command to run until her legs could carry her no further. Escaping her masked pursuers and journeying alone for nearly four days, she encountered a stranger she felt familiar with, who took her under his protection. This stranger was the chosen one of the other, Curiosity. Curiosity told Lily to refer to him as the guide, and escorted her around the world until the day he discovered, or at least admitted to knowing, that Lily was a chosen one like himself, proven when a wound on her hand healed rapidly, the scratch on her palm fading away like a distant memory. Curiosity was, if not a member of the Nostra Order, closely affiliated with them, and decided it would be best for Lily's well-being to hide directly amongst them, rather than risk being discovered by them and hunted down. In her first night among her peers within the Nostra Order, Lily once again heard the whispers of her other as she experienced memories which weren't her own in the night. Perhaps her other's attempts to feed on her, or, more likely, its attempts to soothe her by hiding her own dark past, leaving only a prickling numbness for her thoughts. Not long after joining the Nostra Order, Lily was sent to train in the mountains under the Master Swordsman. Here she was taught the way of the Nostra Order and was trained, then led on expeditions to hunt down chosen ones who had gone mad, threatening to tear the veil. Over the span of six years, Lily slowly grew closer with her master, who taught her the way of the sword. But one day, while on a mission with her, Lily, facing defeat and certain death, 
listened to her begging other memory and allowed it to assist her in battle. Witnessing this and realizing Lily was a chosen one just like those they pursued together, her master hesitated to kill her, reluctantly telling her to leave once she regained the energy to do so. Now alone in the world, Lily had no reason to ignore the voice of memory in her head. She grew closer to her other, who frequently apologized for the hardships that had caused her throughout her life by merely existing. It is likely she became linked with her other at this time, gaining her immortality and aging no more. Eventually returning to her master, who welcomed her back, Lily continued Nostra's mission of slaying corrupted Chosen Ones. Eventually disagreeing with the Nostra Order's black and white view of the world where all Chosen Ones must die, Lily was forced to kill her own master in order to protect an innocent Chosen One like herself who had not yet caused any harm when they had been sent to exterminate a child. A century passed and Nostra issued a call to arms to combat a Chosen One leading an army in war. Lily was approached by a strange woman who she recognized as the guide, much to Curiosity's surprise. Curiosity inhabited a new body this time, but thanks to the power of her other, who she had more than enough time to become almost one with, Lily could identify Curiosity by their memories. Nearing the end of the war she was drawn into, Lily witnessed the birth of a nightmare creature for the first time, seeing for herself the power of a chosen one releasing their other into the world, a scene which frightened both her and memory for the first time in over a hundred years. Unleashing the power of memory, Lily was able to combat the threat and allow her side to win the battle. In the aftermath, she led a happy life with a paladin who fought alongside her during the war. But bearing the burden of immortality, Lily inevitably suffered the loss of her loved one, carrying on his shield as she allowed her memories of their life together to fade away through the power of her other, so that she may move on and continue to protect the veil for centuries to come. Nearly half a millennium passed before Lily was again approached by Curiosity, once again inhabiting a new chosen one. They insisted Nostra had changed their ways, now offering sanctuary to innocent chosen ones through their branch Vostra. Lily rescued and sent many innocent chosen ones to Vostra, working alongside her comrades, a medium with a curious ability to sense chosen ones, and a firearms expert whom Lily would soon learn the way of the pistol through. They worked together long enough for Lily to feel comfortable, no longer erasing her teammate's memory upon discovering her secret every night due to his ability of sensing chosen ones. At his request, Lily even allowed her teammate to attempt gazing into her mind one day to glimpse unreality through her other. What they encountered was a vision of the strongest other, suffering. Terrified and seemingly aged by years through the encounter, her teammate never looked at Lily the same. A year after this incident, Lily discovered that Vostra wasn't the sanctuary she had promised it was to every chosen one she had sent their way. It was actually an experimentation facility where they would amalgamate the chosen ones in an attempt to open a gate beyond the veil into unreality, which Nostra believed it could use to invade and destroy others at the source, namely the largest and most powerful other, Suffering, who her teammate had witnessed firsthand, and who Nostra claimed to have defeated once in the past. Lily destroyed all of Vostra, and at the direction of Curiosity, made her way towards the inevitable birthplace of the Suffering of it, a city quarantined with a plague. Within this city is a Chosen One, the Child. This Chosen One is a child of the plague, constantly dying of it, yet unable to, due to the immortality granted to him by his other, Suffering. This led to a life of torture and experimentation, where he was locked away beneath a church with only a maid of the deacon to ease his pain even slightly. She was his only friend, all hardships he faced at the hands of his abusers only served to strengthen both him and his other, suffering, creating the ultimate time bomb should he ever release his power into the world. He finally did upon the death of the maid, and let loose his own twisted nightmarish creations into the world, giving life to these nightmares through his powers granted to him as a chosen one of suffering. Suffering occupies unreality with one goal, to exist in reality, strengthened by the suffering of the child, were it to ever be let loose into reality, its presence in reality and its link with the child would be powerful enough to threaten complete destruction of the veil. Lily arrives and fights the child's army of nightmares, but severely exhausted during her battle, she faints despite memory's desperate attempts to keep her conscious. She finds herself within her own mind, in the space memory resides, where she was taken until her body could recover. Realizing if they continue to wait, the event they aim to prevent may come to pass, memory suggests an idea to Lily. What if she, like the mad leader of the war she fought in, or even like the guide, Curiosity, set her other loose into the world, manifested into reality as the child had done with suffering? Trusting her dear friend more than memory seemed to trust itself, Lily accepted the idea, and when next she woke, she felt stronger than she ever had, and lighter as well, with only one presence occupying her mind. 
This is the first moment we join the mother in the tutorial of Other Side. Here, we take the role of memory, her lifelong companion who knows her better than anyone. The mother, Lily, lends control over all of her remaining strength until the battle's end. Remembering the strength she had displayed in all of her experience in the world, she shows memory all the techniques of battle and how to use them effectively, allowing memory to take control of what little of her power remains. United, Lily and Memory are able to reach the child who she intends to rescue from suffering. Lily attempts to convince the child she means him no harm, but understanding that she too was once a chosen one and has torn the veil herself to let loose Memory, the child, under the influence of suffering, accuses her and Memory of trying to take reality for themselves, a completely unwarranted accusation, as during loading screens throughout the game, suffering speaks directly to Memory as if a traitor to their own kind. Lamenting the fact that as your brother, you should be helping him, rather than attempting to stop him. But, having gone through as much as he already had, it was too late for Lily to stop the child. Destroying the city and killing all within it, including the now mortal Lily, as he lets loose a scream of anguish, the child summons forth the suffering other into reality, eager to see what destruction the two of them may cause upon its birth. The last thing Lily remembers is wanting to see her dear friend memory, just one last time. According to Curiosity, when two Chosen Ones clash, such as Lily and the Child, who may have been the two most powerful Chosen Ones of all, space and time collapse in a chaotic yet graceful spectacle. This is what we witness for the duration of the game, the result of the Child breaking the veil and tearing reality to create the Dark Corner, a place frozen in time and space between two worlds, where souls and flesh coexist to feed the nucleus of suffering. All may seem hopeless at first, However, it is said in the Book of Nostra that a strong bond between an other and its Chosen One is capable of tearing the veil. What bond in the history of Chosen Ones was as strong as Lily and Memories? Though the mother may have been slain at the hands of the child in the story's introduction, the Red Mother, Lily's spirit, having exchanged realities with Memory, follows the player, offering her memories for the player to give form to and shape an army of your daughters to fight against the child and suffering's nightmarish creation. A war which takes place over the span of 32 years, locked within the dark corner. As memory, you germinate or resurrect daughters throughout the game, the products of Lily's memory, and strengthen them with the memories the two of you share of your life together. You unite against the nightmarish creations born of the child's suffering and free him of his painful memory, as is your power to do. You free the child of his torture in the surgeon. You free the child of his abuse in the deacon. You free the child of his suffering in the maid, birthing a new daughter in the process. And finally, you confront the child once again, this time pushing through to him and severing the bond between the child and suffering. By this point, however, suffering reveals that every daughter killed in the war serves to strengthen them further and further. Suffering's birth now inevitable as a product of attempting to prevent it. You encounter nightmarish creations of the child and suffering throughout the journey. You encounter corrupted daughters, who may even be the manifestations of chosen ones Lily bore guilt over the demise of. But at the end of your journey, you free the child and confront suffering, given form through the corpses of your daughters. The strength of the Red Mother and Memory are enough to create very capable warriors, however, and the daughters successfully defeat suffering, freeing both the Red Mother and the child from the dark corner, and preventing suffering from destroying the veil. Red Mother and the child live on now, safe from the child's past, which is nothing but a memory. One day, the child expresses concern to Mother, something which makes him shiver. She explains to him that this feeling, that this being, is called fear. <laughs>